G'day. In today's video, we're going to have a look and see what can be upgraded in the Nitro N50-650-E. This one was manufactured in 2023, and we've got a GTX 1650 in there, which I find to be utterly crazy. Anyway, we'll quickly go over the specs, and then we'll open it up and see what else can be changed. So looking at the specs, it's got an i5-3400, 8GB of DDR4, I'm assuming single stick, 512GB of RAM, and a GTX 1650 4GB, which is pretty much from 2019, which is currently 2024. <laughs> I know Nitros are meant to be a budget gaming machine, but jeepers. Getting inside the machine itself is very straightforward. One Phillips head screw here. One Phillips head screw here, pull lever, and that cover should come off. So looking in here, I'm disappointed, but also not surprised. Looking inside the machine, we have the GTX 1650 here, which to remove would flick this cover over, and more accurately undo these two screws here, flick this cover over, and then there should be a release point just down here. Small little notch that pushes down, like so. We push it back in, it should click back into position. But with that, I'm going to take out the power supply and have a look. The stick is not getting shown. But the first thing that I do see is on the board itself. We have a 8-pin power here and a 6-pin power here. But I'm not seeing any 24-pin. So that means that this power supply is proprietary for this style of board, which means that if you need to upgrade the power supply to run a faster GPU, you're going to have to either find adapters on AliExpress to convert what you've got to fit this board, or you're working within the limitations of the power supply. But we'll figure that out. Also looking in here, if you are planning on changing the case, you will be losing the front I.O. which goes down here. The board itself would normally end along here. We extend out further. So basically if you do want to change the case, you're probably going to be losing those front USB ports that I predict that we have down here. We have a Type-C, USB 3.0, headphone microphone jack. So you will lose those if you do get an aftermarket case. Now let's get this power supply out and see what wattage we are, but I'm going to predict we're about a 450, maybe even a 350 watt. If we're lucky it's going to be 500 or 600, but I'm very doubtful on that. So what I've had to do is undo four silver Phillips head screws, which screwed into the power supply, and then cut a cable tie over here. Looking at the power supply, we are around a 500 watt power supply, as mentioned here. That may change depending on the precise version of case that you've got. The dilemma there is it leaves us fairly limited to what process, uh, graphics cards we can change it to. Something like an RX 6600 would probably be all right, but if we were to go down the NVIDIA path, we're probably looking at something like an RTX 3050, or maybe a 4060, but I'd have to look that one up. I'm not too familiar with their power requirements. Looking down here as well, I see a 6-pin and an 8-pin. There goes my phone. A 6 and an 8-pin for graphics card. Um, but if it does require two 8s, you're probably going to have to use an adapter to be able to get the extra earthing. Because I'm certainly not seeing it down here. Also, on that note, looking around, I'm not seeing any extra SATAs. I'm seeing two slots here for two 3.5 inch drives, or a 2.5 inch drive depending on what you want to prefer, but I'm not seeing any extra cables to power it, so that is a bit underwhelming. I'm not too familiar what the hell this cable here is, two wires, a bit odd, but I have to spin this around and keep looking. Looking inside the machine, we have, I'll try and get the angle right so you can see, also, with the graphics card, we are mounted down by these two screws here. That's to stop GPU sag, which for something like a GTX 1650, I would really not expect. But as a seller of computers, you do want to minimise any issues the customer may have, so we'll see why they've done it. 
Looking down on the board, I do see one extra NVMe slot here. I'm assuming the screws are included with the uh, included with the case itself or in the computer itself, but not actually screwed in. Also looking down here, as I mentioned about the SATA power, I do see these two connectors here. I'm going to assume that they're probably going to be for power. So look in there, I do see SATA PWR1, PWR2. So that would be you need the SATA data cable, the SATA power cable, which is a proprietary plug for this motherboard. Normally they'd be sourced directly from the power supply. So you plug those two in and you'll be able to put the hard drive down here and have the cables routed down, probably under here, up and in. We do have another NVMe drive over here with this particular one is a 512 gig NVMe drive. If we have a look at it, I see SN, SN740, so it's a WD or Western Digital drive, that one. Uh, 512 gig, that's basically where the operating system is and everything on there. If you do change that, you'd have to reinstall Windows and go on from there. If you are wanting to change to an aftermarket cooler, sorry, but you're probably going to be fairly limited. You may be able to change the 90 centimeter fan on here to something else, as this screw pattern is fairly similar. You could potentially change it to like an AMD cooler. I have seen on an MSI machine an RGB fan on here, but I'm seeing no form of RGB control or header on this particular board. So that is probably fairly unlikely. Um, what else can I spot down here? RAM. If you remove the RAM by pulling the tabs out, tab out, tab heating graphics card. No, it's only one tab. If I pull this up now, there's a little notch down here. When you do go to reinstall the RAM, that will need to be the correct facing location. It will only fit one way. We have a look here. We're we going to have uh, eight gigabyte. 1R by 16 PC4, 3200. So fairly generic stuff. Would recommend putting another stick of 8 gig in there at least to get it running in dual channel mode rather than single channel mode. Do get a slight bump in gaming performance and overall performance of the machine. And I've just put that in the correct way. So I'll push this side down first. And then I'll push this side down. And it should click. And that is now installed. But adding another stick of identical RAM usually get, in some games, a 10, maybe up to a 10% frame rate boost. So definitely worthwhile on top of the extra RAM that you're also adding in. Looks like we do have an RGB fan of some variety over here. I'm assuming it's just a rainbow color or a red color, particularly if being a nitro case, I'm gonna assume it's just gonna be a red LED fan on it. And on the front here, I'm gonna assume that this section here lights up as well red. So you can see the tint through there. So overall, the processor itself could be upgraded, but I don't know what the power the power limitations on this particular board would be. I probably wouldn't bother going higher than an i5 that it already has, because then you would have higher power requirements, higher thermals, and you would need a more powerful cooler to go on there to match. Well, at least that's what I'm going to predict. The power supply itself does leave us fairly limited in what we can upgrade to, especially being it only has an 8 and a 6 pin PCIe adapter or power connector. Doesn't have any extra SATAs, so if you're buying this second hand, you will probably have to purchase them. Or maybe daisy chain a splitter over here off these ones that are running the, I believe an NFC pad up the top or wireless charging pad at the top of the case, which is a bit odd, but I have started to see it more and more in these pre-made computers. Anyway, that will do for today regarding the Nitro N50. Hope that helps you regarding some questions that you may have for it. I'm going to catch you guys later, and I'll see you in another video. Bye.